All right, guys, so this next video is basically going over Fibonacci and just what that is in general and just how we use it. So Fibonacci is basically a tool used to measure basically a high to a low or a low to a high, and it's meant to help you basically analyze retracements based off of impulse correction, then it's supposed to hit some magic fib number, fib number, I'm sorry, and then your targets are accordingly based off fib extensions, right? So that's how predominantly anybody and everybody in the niche, this is how they use them. They trade their quote unquote golden pocket or they trade 70, 0.78, 0 0.88 retracements and then aiming for obviously fib extensions, negative 27, negative 62, etc 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 and that's how be, that's how people basically trade their you know their fibonacci but what people have to realize is at the end of the day a fibonacci doesn't matter how you draw it at the end of the day it's all very subjective and by subjective i mean how do you know exactly which high and low to basically use etc etc like for example here low to high that reacted it didn't even react to your quote unquote golden pocket it only made it to i'm sorry it only made it to equilibrium so what does that mean it's just why didn't it go to your 62 71 or potentially 78 88 why didn't it go there and that's because price i don't care what anybody says if 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 price rejects from any type of fib level it's not because of that fib level. It's because of a, any other catalyst that comes into the market that we're going to speak on down the road. And so when you understand that, this whole tool just becomes noise in the marketplace. Because in reality, the fib is irrelevant. The candles are going to tell you everything, right? So there's really no point in, in the ideology behind fibs, in my opinion, just because it's all subjective and I haven't seen many much real research on why your 62 fib, your magic fib, your golden pocket, why it always has to respect that. How many times have you put up a, a limit on a 618 trade and either it didn't hit or it hit, hit SL and then went the right way or just hit SL and kept going, right? Obviously, there's more confluence to that, but I'm not going to rely a trade on a magical fib level that somebody with probably no results is telling me to do so. Like, I'm just not going to do that. So we don't trade fibs in that manner. I trade fibs with something called understanding what a premium and a discount is, right? And those are actually finance terms for people that don't know, like they they're originate from finance and they have different meanings in finance, but I use them in different manners here. So there's three basically terms that comes to mind when speaking about Fibonacci, and that is discount, premium, and equilibrium. Now, what does that mean? Is when you're understanding price, when you're understanding impulses and corrections, right, ideally, Let's say price is coming down and you correct. You ideally want to sell anywhere in the in the red region, right? And let's say this was basically an uptrend. And basically the correction, you want to buy in the gray area so that then you get the extension to the upside. But that's, you know, that's basically how it goes, right? So what discount means is a discount market is that's where you want to buy right your orange i mean your gray region that is considered discount pricing and your red region is considered premium pricing and then right in the middle 50 percent that's considered your equilibrium and your equilibrium is such an important aspect to just trading in general and there's actual logic to that like Whenever you think equilibrium, you think balance, you think equal, right? You think that essentially that's a key level in price, and it is. And historically, you can backtrack that. Um, 
so ideally the whole point of this fib is to understand where you are in structure and for example these are the examples i'm going to use so first one is obviously your usd right obviously right here we see swing high swing low and our sell came in at a premium pricing right next one high low premium pricing continuation right took out the zero next one high low premium pricing extension to the downside right high low premium pricing continuation high low premium continuation right and it's so common and this isn't really to any type of quote unquote entry technique this is just more to show you where you are in price and it allows you to oh okay we I now understand the, the, the quote unquote trading range. So now all I want to do is sell from anywhere in this box area if the setup is valid and if it continues trend, right? And now for the inverse, right? Low, high, we came into a discounted market, expanded to the upside. High, I mean low, high, and now we get into the gray area again or discounted pricing to then move more to the upside, right? then low high retracement into discounted pricing and continuation so it just shows me that even if i see some sort of entry inside the premium that i know i would much rather wait and look for a setup in the discounted pricing because not only is it better risk to reward but it's more than likely going to work out more if you actually buy from a discount and sell from a premium right as long as you're following trend all right, so that just discusses um, your discount and premium pricing. It's just it's all meant to just show you where you are in market structure and how to help you continue that market structure. All right, so now the third point was equilibrium, which is right here. And equilibrium, it's going to be more so used um, more towards the Wyckoff side of, of the course just because equilibrium of range is, is something very important. But you can also use that equilibrium as a key point in any time frame. So here we have EURUSD and AUDUSD. And I marked out basically as far as I could go back. We we measured that trading range, right? Low to high, right? Actually, I accidentally did these backwards. Oh, well. But the point here is equilibrium. And look at how price, look at what it does around equilibrium. Right, price will eventually reach equilibrium one way or another. And that's a good way to determine your macro bias is, oh, we just rejected macro equilibrium. So maybe it's going to go in so-and-so direction or it'll come back so-and-so. So it's a good way to just interpret where you are in price. right? And this can go forward to almost any pair. I just used AUD, USD, and your USD because those are the main pairs that I trade. So it's it's really cool to see that just what happens around equilibrium and you can even do this in the smaller time frames mid time frames or, or high time frames like this so yeah i mean it's just they're just cool little tips you know obviously not not the most significant parts of this course but it's a cool little tip to have and it, and it helps you be more conservative with your trades so yeah guys